Okay guys, in today's video I put together some information to help talk about what is EPA Section 609 training and certification and how does it relate to those of us that are doing our own repairs or that are doing routine maintenance on air conditioning systems on our vehicles. So what is Section 609? The EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has a set of regulations that fall under Section 609 of the Clean Air Act. So that Section 609 of the Clean Air Act is where this phrase Section 609 comes from. And this section addresses the handling and recycling of refrigerants that are specifically used in the servicing of motor vehicle air conditioners or MVACs. So this section doesn't have anything to do with the air conditioning in your house, for example. It's only for the types of systems that you find in vehicles. Now federal law in this section also deals with prohibiting the intentional release or venting of not only ozone depleting refrigerants like R12 but also alternatives such as R134 whenever you're maintaining, servicing, repairing, or disposing of any sort of MVAC equipment. Section 609 requires that all MVAC systems be serviced through the proper use of EPA certified refrigerant handling equipment. So that's essentially what this section is about. It's about the refrigerants that are involved. It's about the tools that are involved. It's about the systems that you're working on with those tools and using those refrigerants. So does this section 609 affect you? Well, the EPA started requiring Section 609 credentials to purchase non-ozone depleting refrigerants like R134A and R1234YF a couple of years ago on January 1st, 2018. Now originally this requirement to have a Section 609 certification, a credential that said you've, you've studied the material and passed a test, was only imposed on the purchase of R12. But starting in 2018 they began to extend that to these other refrigerants as well. Now the Section 609 credentials requirement on the sale of R134 and R1234YF refrigerant is only applicable to containers that are two pounds and larger, whereas the sale of R12 refrigerant is restricted in any size container. You can't buy R12 at all unless you have Section 609 certification, and that's been the case since November 14th of 1994. So starting on January 1st, 2018 is the first restriction on R134A and R1234YF. That sales restriction covers refrigerants no matter what kind of container they're in, except that these small cans of R12 replacement refrigerants like R134A and R1234YF that are designed to hold two pounds or less of that particular refrigerant and have unique fittings and self-sealing valves, these are still exempted for retail sale. And you don't need to have a Section 609 certification to purchase those. The sales restriction of this section does not cover motor vehicle air conditioning equipment or components. So you don't need this to go out and buy a gauge set, and you don't need this to go out and buy a replacement compressor. But you do need it when it comes to making a purchase of the refrigerant itself. Now another aspect of whether it affects you is any person who repairs or services an MVAC system for consideration, which means you're taking payment or you're bartering, you're trading something to do that, is required to be properly trained and certified under this Section 609 of the Clean Air Act. And they do that by taking an EPA approved program. And those individuals must utilize either refrigerant recovery recycling or recovery only equipment that's been approved by the EPA. So you're either just taking the refrigerant out and you're going to send it somewhere to have it recycled later, or you're going to take it out for, for the purposes of recycling it and putting it back into the vehicle. Individuals who are working on their own MVAC system are not covered under this rule, and you can work on and add refrigerant without being certified. This is why you can go down to the local auto store and, and pick up a couple of small cans of R134A today, and you don't need this to, to do that. However, if you get reported for intentionally venting this refrigerant into the atmosphere, you know whether you're maintaining, servicing, repairing, disposing, anything, if you are reported 
and, and if we're doing this, you can be fine, so just keep that in mind. Now, since 1994, when chlorofluorocarbon, CFC, R12, was discontinued for use in new motor vehicles, the most common refrigerant that's been used since has been a hydrofluorocarbon, HFC, R134A. But like the ozone-depleting CFCs they replaced, most of these HFCs are also potent greenhouse gases, and they have very high global warming potentials. So in 2012, automobile manufacturers began the transition to new climate-friendly alternative refrigerants like R1234YF. As a result of a July 2015 rulemaking by the, by the EPA, by model year 2021, MVAC systems in newly manufactured light-duty vehicles in the USA will no longer use the HFC R134A. Now, there, this rule was successfully overturned in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia back in August 2017. Uh, the EPA appealed that actually earlier this year, and that is still kind of working its way back and forth through the courts, but there was enough churn on this that you're still seeing most manufacturers are going ahead with phasing out R134A and transitioning mostly to R1234YF, although there are some other refrigerants that are approved as, as uh, less global warming potential replacements that are being considered by some manufacturers. The reason I highlight this is even though this rule has been delayed, the manufacturers are kind of going ahead because they, they have to plan in advance. And, and you guys know that the EPA is not going to let this go with climate change in the mix. They're going to keep going at this until they get some success with it. That would be my opinion on what's going to happen. Now, what's my opinion on the overall thing and what I'm trying to convey to you guys? Section 609, bottom line, regulates the sale and handling of the actual refrigerants. And only be, when they're being purchased in containers holding two pounds or greater of that regulated refrigerant. Now, except for R12, we're every size container is regulated. But for R134A, for R1234YF, all this has to do with is purchasing a container that holds two pounds or more. Section 609 also addresses the role the EPA has in ensuring that all equipment and components used in MVAC systems and their maintenance, repair, and disposal are approved to meet certain standards and guidelines before they can be sold. But it does not regulate the retail sale of such equipment or systems the way it does the refrigerants. And again, this is why you can go down and buy a gauge set. This is why you can go down and buy a replacement compressor, and you don't need this to do those purchases. So what Section 609 does for you is it allows you to purchase refrigerants in bulk, these 30-pound cylinders, for example, from wholesale suppliers, rather than in individual two-pound or less containers at retail. And again, this is all except R12, which is controlled across the board. Section 609 certification also provides you with a broad overview of the environmental ramifications of these gases, the importance thereof of their proper handling, and some technical information around the standards and equipment involved in refrigerant recovery and recycling in automotive systems. So if you own several older vehicles, and as well perhaps you perform maintenance and repairs for an extended circle of several more, I recommend you consider obtaining this Section 609 certification. It'll allow you to purchase R134 refrigerant in bulk, for example, such as the 30-pound AC Delco cylinder you see over here in the graphic, as well as providing you with all of the relevant knowledge and information around working with such refrigerant. But if instead, if you're only performing maintenance and repairs on your own vehicle or two, then I would not recommend pursuing this Section 609 certification. You'll be covered by the existing retail R134A type refrigerant exemptions on two pound or undersized cans like this AC Delco one you see on the left. So it wouldn't be necessary. But I'd still encourage reading the Section 609 material to become more knowledgeable about refrigerants. So in short, I decided to go get this certification. And one other point I'll throw out there verbally is just remember, right? At one point, you could purchase R12. We, were, we found it was harmful to the ozone layer, it became very restricted, and then you could only get it at all if you had this kind of certification. So even if you got well-maintained equipment, your equipment's not leaking, you're just trying to do um, you know, climate-friendly maintenance, you plan to recover that R12, you plan to make the 
equipment repair, and you plan to check for leaks, and you plan to put the refrigerant, the R12 refrigerant back in, you can't do anything with that refrigerant unless you have this 609 certification. There's nothing to say that at some point that's not what's going to happen to R134A in the future as well. So it's a good idea, I think, for, for the small amount of time and money it costs to get this certification, to, you know, to kind of bone up on this material and get it. So let me talk to you a little bit about what's involved. So how do you get certified? So the EPA's got a list of approved technician training and certification program providers. These providers, in order for you to get certified, they've got to deliver to you an EPA-approved program, and you have to pass a test demonstrating your knowledge across the areas the EPA cares about, which is the proper use of MVAC servicing equipment, the applicable regulatory requirements and the involved industry standards, the importance of refrigerant recovery and recycling, you know, of course, versus venting, right? And the effects of improper handling of refrigerants on the ozone layer, and you know, in the case of R12, and on the climate, in the case of all of these types of refrigerants, with the exception, perhaps, of those very few pieces of equipment that use carbon dioxide. So, in my case, I decided to go with the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence, or ASE, to get my 609 certification, study materials and test. The ASE is a well-known provider of formal certifications for automotive mechanics across all automotive technology domains. You'll frequently see when you go to a shop people that are ASC certified and in, in, in whatever it is they're working on for you, brakes, engine, transmissions, what have you. At the time of this video, the cost of the ASC 609 program was only 19 bucks. And by the way, once you obtain the 609 certification, it never expires. The time investment for me to review that study guide and take that online test was total end-to-end -end well less than an hour. And it could have probably been less than that if I, if I knew after the test, you know, if I knew before the test rather what I ended up knowing after the test about the process. The ASC program also has an offline version, which is a nice touch. You can actually get the study guide and the test mailed to you in hard copy. You can then fill it out, you know, pencil and paper style and return it in the mail for grading. If that's an option that you need, it's, it's uh, something that the ASE version offers. I'll link the website in the video description below because sometimes these links change and they're easier to fix there than they are in the video. But if you go to that link, you'll come up to a page like this at ASE and there's a place where you can download that study guide and there's a link down near the bottom where you can go to the ASE campus website to get started. When you click on that AS ASC campus website, you'll come to a page like this. You scroll down a little bit. There's another place you can view the free study guide, and you can also print it from here. There's a, a set of FAQs you, you can review if you get stuck or have other questions. And then primarily, there's a place to register and get started where you create a proof profile on the ASC campus. You select the particular test here that you want to take, and you make the purchase. You know, you pay your $19 and you get started. The fact that the site you know, requires you to register is not an uncommon requirement. Just be prepared that you need to do that. I was able to pay the $19 fee online using a credit card. Super convenient, super modern. They also take other forms of payment, though, offline forms of payment. So, you know, if you think about it, the fact they're going to let you take the test hard copy mailed to you makes sense that they offer some flexibility there. Bear in mind that some states are going to charge sales tax on this transaction. And also bear in mind, if you do not pass the first time, you'll have to pay again to take the test a second time. Personally, I downloaded and printed out the PDF study guide. I found that it was very nicely done by the ASC editors. It consisted of 15 pages printed front and back. There were three additional pages or so of ads for other ASC classes and programs, as well as some, some blank sheets labeled notes that you could use during the test as a reference. And you also you can reference the study guide during this test as well, so you don't necessarily have to print it out. The test is open book, which is why originally I printed out the study guide ahead of time to use as a reference if needed. I didn't realize until I started the test that there was also a convenient link during the test to the online version. So just telling you that off, off the top, you know, you might want to go that route instead of printing it out. However, I definitely recommend reading through it before starting the test. It allows the test to go very quickly because you're already familiar with the sections and layout. The online test is a multiple choice type, and the questions are going to cover all of the EPA required knowledge areas, which I found are mostly a combination of common sense, as well as the key points emphasized in the study guide sections. And again, you can reference that study guide online during the test as well. I found that test to be very straightforward, 
and for 19 bucks and then the peace of mind to know that at some point I'm not going to have somebody tell me I can't purchase the refrigerator I need to repair one of my vehicles it was worth it so I hope you found this information helpful I hope it helps you know explain a little bit about what this means and and how you might go about getting it if you're interested in getting it if you've got other questions about it I'm happy to share my experience and try to answer them go ahead and leave a comment below uh, if you've got other providers that you took, and, and please leave those there as well. I don't have any you know, particular preference for the ASC. I just found that that was a, a name I was familiar with, and, and it worked out well for me. I also found that for 19 bucks, I think it was like a dollar or two cheaper than some of the other places I looked at on the EPA site. Again, if you found this information useful, go ahead and hit that like button so that I know this is the kind of material you guys like to see. And again, if you found this kind of content useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.